Hello and welcome to this video on building a slide out menu with CSS. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at how this works and then we'll dive straight into the code and build this up entirely from scratch. So we're not using pure CSS here, we're using uh, JavaScript just to trigger a class uh, on our menu which is going, going to use CSS transitions to slide this out. Uh, but you can see here I've got a page with quite a bit of content on. Uh, you can see that this stays in a fixed position. Uh, when we click this, we get a slide out menu. We have our content here, so you can add whatever you want in here. And if you noticed uh, this arrow change, this is also controlled uh, with CSS as well. So you can modify this to look how you want. You can position things how you want. Uh, you can change the speed of the transition. Obviously, you can change uh, aesthetic things like the colors and the sizes. Uh, but generally, we're just going to look at how we can do this. Uh, all we're doing in terms of JavaScript, like I said, is just triggering a class on here, which is going to force this to pop out with CSS transitions. So with that done, let's look straight into the code and start to build this up. So for our index page, we're not starting entirely from scratch. Uh, I've already set up a few things here just to make this a little bit easier. Um, we've got our basic document layout. Uh, we have a style sheet linked in, uh, app.css, which is living in this CSS directory. It's currently uh, blank. We have app.js as well, which is linked in at the bottom here. That's why, where we're going to be writing our JavaScript. And um, we have our meta viewport tag here, uh, which is going to assist the scaling uh, on smaller devices or larger devices but basically this is just the responsive part of this so we're going to start then by just adding in a wrapper on our page and that's going to contain some content just so we can see how this sits with content on the page so i'm going to create a div here with a class of wrapper and this is where all of our page content is going to go you can chop and change this around and use different class names but i'm just going to call it wrapper for now and i'm going to have a paragraph in here with some lorem ipsum Ipsum in. I'm just using a jet generator to do this, uh, but go ahead and just uh, pause the video and take some time to add your own content in. So I'm just going to do quite a bit of text in here. That should be enough. So let's go ahead and check this out. Cool. Yeah, that should be okay. Uh, in fact, let's just add one more paragraph down here like that, just to make sure. Okay. So the next thing to do then is we want to go ahead and style our wrapper, uh, give ourselves a nice font on the body just so it looks a little bit neater. So we're going to head over to app.css, which remember is already linked in. Let's go, and go ahead and apply some styles on the body. So I'm going to give this a font of 1M. We're going to choose Helvetica as the font. And we have a sans serif fallback here, like so sans serif so for our line height this is entirely optional uh, 1.4 that's just going to space out our text a little bit nicer and we're going to choose the font weight for everything as 200 so that gives us the following so it looks a little bit nicer now let's go ahead and just style out our wrapper and we'll see why we're doing this in a moment but we're going to give a margin left on this of 50 pixels and that's going to give us enough room just to have our little button here that's going, going to trigger uh, our menu coming out. So let's start on the markup for the navigation now. We're going to have uh, an HTML5 nav element and we're going to give this a class of nav side so we can target that. And then we're going to have some side content in here. And then within this we're going to have an anchor which is going to be our toggle. So we'll just put a, a, a hash for the href and we'll give this a class of nav toggle and then in here we're not actually going to uh, place any text we're going to control this using uh, css pseudo elements and that's going to be able to allow us to set the content and then we can change that arrow direction when we uh, toggle and untoggle the navigation so this is all we need for our navigation obviously within here you can go ahead and place all of your content uh, but obviously at the moment it just looks like this it doesn't look like much so we'll go and inspect this just so we can take a look at it along the way. So we've got this as our wrapper and then we've got our toggle uh, inside, uh, which we're going to style as well. So over on app.css again, then we are going to style up our nav side. 
So the first thing we want to do is set the positioning of this and that will be a, a fixed position. So it won't uh, move as the user scrolls down the page. We want this to be zero pixels on the left or just zero on the left. We want this to be zero on the top. We want a height of 100% and we want a width of 100%. And then we want to give this a max width of 250 pixels. Like so. So let's just give this a background color now. We'll choose cornflower blue. That's a nice blue color. And just see what this has done. So you can see here, it's just acting as a normal menu. Uh, we've got 100% uh, of the height. We've got the width that we defined. We've got the content still inside of here, but it's still not looking uh, great. This is the sort of toggled out state. So this is what it will look like uh, when the user clicks that button and it's out. Uh, now we want to uh, apply a few more styles here. We want to change the box sizing to border box. The reason for this is we're going to give it a little bit of padding and we don't want that to uh, adjust the actual width of the container. You can go ahead and just calculate these, uh, but I'm going to do that for now. And that just allows us to have that without pushing this out anymore. And we want to go ahead and just set a color in here. So we'll just set that to white. And we'll go ahead and just for now, uh, we'll say margin left minus 250 pixels, but I'm going to comment that out. All that's going to do is it will hide the menu. because If we set a negative margin, it's going to push this away and we're not going to see it anymore. So if we were to just uncomment this, you'll see that that just gets rid of it. But I want to bring this... Uh, uh, I want to comment this out again just so I can see it so we can uh, style our toggle. So this is our nav toggle here which we can't see at the moment. So let's go ahead and uh, style this up. So then nav toggle. And this is going to be a position of absolute so we can place it where we want within this nav side container. We're going to have a right here of minus 40 pixels and a top of zero. And now let's go ahead and give this a width and height just so we can see this. So we're going to say 40 pixels width and 40 pixels height. You can obviously go ahead and just adjust this if you want. And what we'll do now is just give this a background color so we can see it. And again, we'll choose cornflower blue to match the actual navigation. But again, you can change this color or do what you want with this. So we've got this sort of square here now. And we can go ahead and uh, do things like add our arrow. So what we're going to do then is we're going to say nav toggle and we're going to have a before pseudo element. And this is going to allow us to add some content in. Of course, here what you could do is for the nav toggle, you could have an image or you could have some text and you could change that with JavaScript or CSS if it was some kind of background image. But for now, for the content, I'm going to add in uh, an arrow. So we have an escaped entity here, and this will basically place in an arrow like that. So it's not looking great at the moment, but we can go ahead and adjust that. So inside of here, then I'm going to set the font weight to 600, and I'm going to set the color to white. And then in here, we can go ahead and say things like line height 40 pixels. That's going to go ahead and place that in the center. We can go ahead and remove the text decoration. So that will remove that underline just there. And then we can go ahead and do a text align center. So obviously that will center that arrow there. So we're looking pretty good already. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and add a little bit of a border radius on this button. So we can say border, bottom, right, radius and we can set that to three pixels so if we just check that out that's going ahead and just given that a little bit of a radius around there so it looks a little bit nicer and overall on the navigation i want to give this a shadow but i'm not going to apply the shadow to the navigation side just yet i'm going to do that when it's toggled out because if we apply a shadow to it when it's in we'll be able to see that on the edge of the screen so for the nav toggle then, for that toggle button, let's give that an, uh, a shadow of one pixel on the X axis, zero on the Y, we'll give it a three pixel spread, and we'll use RGBA to give this a black color, and we'll say 0.1 in the alpha channel. So when we refresh, it's barely visible, but you can see that 
little shadow just on here and you can obviously play around with this and, and make it look a lot better so we're at the point now where we've styled our navigation we've got it looking how we want but we want it in a state where it's collapsed initially we don't want it to be out like this uh, when the user lands on the page so how do we go ahead and do this well the first thing we do is we bring back the margin left of minus 250 pixels that's going to go ahead and get rid of that but this is still visible obviously because uh, this is 40 pixels wide the main navigation is 250 wide so pulling that in we can still see this and our goal then is to be able to click onto this and then this scroll out so we're only going to be using javascript to actually add a class to this nav side uh, nav element and it's going to be called nav open so we're going to manually do this now and then we'll use javascript to toggle it later and then we'll be able to see our transition work as well remember we're doing css transitions so nav open has no effect at the moment because we have no class attached to it but we can go ahead and add this down here so we can say nav side if that also has a class of nav open so that's our selector we're going to set the margin left to zero so now you'll see that pop out if we go ahead and get rid of this within our developer tools it goes back in so it's already working to some extent and what we're going to do is when that uh, navigation is open we're going to give that a box shadow as well remember we don't want the box shadow when it's in because we're still going to see that at the very left of the page so we'll say one pixel one pixel three pixels and we use rgba to create a black value with a 0.1 alpha channel and again you can see that slight shadow there now so again play around with this and feel free to design how you want so um, we need to now deal with the fact that the arrow even when it's closed or rather when it opens uh, it's still pointing this way we want this to go back the other way so we can obviously control this uh, with CSS because we are using the before pseudo element so we can say nav side with a class of nav open we want to style nav toggle within this and we want to change the before pseudo element and all we want to do in here then is just go ahead and add a different escaped unicode character so that's 2190 so 2192 is the outwards arrow 2190 is the inwards arrow so now you can see that change when we go ahead and get rid of this class we see the outward arrow so there we are so this is all good but we want to go ahead and implement the javascript toggle now and then what we want to do is look at transitions on our nav side so it will get a nice css transition when we do toggle the class so for the javascript side of things then i'm going to be using jquery and i'm going to be pulling this down from google hosted libraries but you feel free to use whichever library or just use raw javascript to, to to do this i'm just using jquery just because it's just going to be a lot easier and quicker but go ahead and use whichever solution you want so i'm going to pull down uh, version 2.1.4 of jquery and i'm going to place this in my uh, page just here so let's uh, go ahead and create a script element with a source attribute and paste that in and remember down here we have js slash app.js linked in so I can go ahead and write any JavaScript that I need in here to deal with this and this is pretty straightforward and again whichever solution you're using go ahead and use that whatever's best for you so our selector here is going to be within nav side the nav toggle element and we want to attach an event handler here so we want to say that when this is clicked we'll, we want to run this callback so in here then we want to go ahead and toggle that nav open class on here so let's get rid of this initially and let's go ahead and just re refresh our page so this is in and then we can see it in action uh, when we uh, actually get this javascript complete so the one thing that we don't want this to do is we don't want when a user's halfway down the page when they click on this notice that that will automatically jump to the top of the page because we have our href attribute set to a hash so what we want to do in here then is as an argument for this callback we want to uh, have e 
and then we're going to prevent the default behavior. So we use the prevent default method on that event object. So now when we refresh and we scroll down and I click this, nothing happens. So I'm clicking this at the moment and we're not taken up to the top of the page. That's not a good idea for you for your user experience. So now to toggle this nav open class, this is extremely easy with jQuery, which is why I picked this for this uh, particular example. We're saying this, which at the moment represents this nav toggle, which remember is here. And then I'm using the parent method, which is going to go ahead and get the parent to this. So be careful with any extra markup you add in here. The direct parent to this is nav side, which is what we want to toggle the class on. So uh, this is absolutely fine, but go ahead and adjust this depending on either which library you're using or uh, how your markup is structured. So I'm then going to use the toggle class method. So we're now toggling the class on this nav side element, and I'm going to go ahead and toggle the nav open class. And all toggle class means is add it the first time or remove it the first time and then just keep cycling. So it'll add, remove, add, remove. So if we keep an eye inside of our uh, elements tab on our uh, within Chrome developer tools, we'll be able to see this. So when I click this, you can see it adds that class there. When I click this again, it toggles it again, so it removes that class. So we're controlling the display of this with uh, CSS. All we're doing with JavaScript is uh, toggling that class, which is allowing us to do that. And this is a much better solution than using .show or uh, using anything within jQuery or any other library to set CSS properties. It's much better to have the class there already. So we have a working solution, but we're going to go ahead and improve this with CSS transitions. So let's close off that. We don't need that anymore. And under nav side, we want to define the transition that we want to happen, which property we want it to happen on, the speed, and also the transition type as well. So this is really easy. We just use transition. Uh, the non-vendor prefix property is supported by most browsers now, so I'm not going to include the vendor prefixes, but uh, if you are supporting very very old browsers you can go ahead and do that so we're transitioning on the margin property because remember we are changing the uh, margin left which is minus 250 to zero when we actually toggle it open so that's what we're transitioning on you can say all but there's not much point here because that's the only thing that we're interested in then we have the speed so again you can adjust this to which whichever speed you want and then we have the transition type and ease in out is quite a nice one here. We can do things like ease in or you can have a linear uh, transition type as well. So I'm going to pick ease in out. So what's going to happen here then is when we toggle our class, our margin property will change because we have our transition defined here. That's going to go ahead and transition going from minus 250 to zero, which remember is just showing our element. So when I click this now, you can see that slides out. When I click it again, it slides back in. So there we are. We have a nice left hand slide out menu, mainly built with CSS, but just using JavaScript to toggle that class, uh, which allows us to show and hide our menu.